Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Another live broadcast today. As we always do, we'll be looking into this book. This book today will offer us uh, insight from the writings of St. Matthew, and I'm reading to you from chapter 21 of his book. This is a time where Jesus was almost to be crucified. It was just leading right up to his crucifixion, and the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And they brought the ass and the colt and put on him their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees and strode them along the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of them that sought, sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And listen to this. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Well, <laughs> here is Jesus Christ, maybe operating in a manner that you and I just don't believe that someone should operate in. But Jesus was serious, <laughs> and Jesus was right, and Jesus was sinless. Can I tell you something about this book, this 21st chapter of the book of Matthew, where we've read to you from verses 8 through 13. These verses offer some insight, and I would like to uh, dig into these for just a little while this morning with you, if you'll allow me to try to pick out a couple of the places that I want to um, make note of and offer them up to you for consideration. First of all, whenever Jesus rode into Jerusalem, did you hear what they said? They said, who is this? <laughs> and I wonder that same question today. Who is this? Who is this man of Galilee? Who is the one who came into the temple? Who is the one who turned over the money changers? Who is the one that drove out those men who were performing illegal activities? Who was the one that had an argument with those who sold the doves? Well, this man is none other than G Jesus Christ. This man, whenever they ask the question about him, who is this? We could ask the same question to ourselves today. Who is Jesus? Who is he? Who is he really? Who is he to me? Who is he to you? Who is he to the church of the 21st century? Is he really this Jesus that was portrayed here, acting in anger? Or is he just strictly some God of love? that we've got him made out to be. I hear people say he's a God of love. Therefore, we ought to operate in love. Well, let me tell you what, love has two sides to it. And Jesus has two sides to him. He was not always the Lamb of God. Part of the time, he was the Lion of the tribe of Judah. If we get a clear picture of who God is, we will get a clear picture of who the Word of God is. Can I make this notation? The Son of God is no different than the Word of God. And the Son of God is not an ounce different than the Spirit of God. If we truly believe that these three operate in unison, 
God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, then they are all the same in their characteristics and in their actions. So we can't just say that God is a God of love because sometimes his love has a strange side to it. So we need to ask ourselves that important question, who is God? Who is Jesus? Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the church today? And if it's not measured up to what this book recommends, then we need to take a second look to see if we're really worshiping the Jesus of the Bible. Now, the Jesus of the Bible came into town. He, he came in riding into town. He came in and they asked, who is this? We need to get the clear picture of who Jesus really is. <laughs> Our view of Jesus is twisted. It's warped. It's mismanaged. It's inaccurate. It's not correct. Jesus of the Bible is far different than what we want to portray him today. In fact, in today's modern religion, this would be a Jesus who is full of sin full of love, but full of sin, a sin allowing Jesus. That's what we've made him out to be. But the people ask in this particular setting, who is this? So we have to get a clear view. In John, they said, sirs, we would see Jesus. And we need to ask the same question just as John 12, 21 did, we would see Jesus. Do we really want to see him? Do we want to see him riding in on his donkey? Do we want to see him destroying things in the temple? Do we want to see him turn over the money changers and throw out the thieves that are in the house of prayer? Or do we want to just be a smooth, easy, no ruffles type of person. Who is Jesus? How do we see him? And are we willing to look at him in a different light than what contemporaries look at him? Oh, it's all an easy road. For many, this God of love, this Jesus that would harm no one, this God who would send no one to hell, this God who makes no requirements, this God who is never angry. For Jesus is God, and he did display himself when he came into the temple. And we have to acknowledge if we believe that the words of Matthew are correct. We have to acknowledge that Jesus did not come into the temple in the contemporary manner in which we like to look at him at. He's a different Jesus. Well, this temple is important in our lesson today. He came in where the house of God was. He came in where the priest was. He came in where the Shekinah glory was. He came in where the forgiveness was, where the sanctification was. He came into that mighty temple. But he didn't come in like you and I would expect him to come in. Well, this temple is no more than the church. It's no more than you and I in a symbolic manner. And whenever Jesus comes into our personal life, or whenever he abides in the church, he abides in a manner in which people are unwilling to acknowledge. This Jesus, he's not riding in easy. 
He's coming in hard. He's coming in fast. He's coming in deliberate. He's coming in with judgment. Hallelujah. Even judgment. Oh, we don't believe in that today. But this temple that he came into, he, he has to have these kinds of traits. Otherwise, he's not effective. Otherwise, there's no cleansing. Otherwise, there's no purity. Yes, he has to come into his temple. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Whenever Jesus rides into town and we ask who he is, let us just acknowledge that he is one that will clean the temple. If we have dirty temples, we're not part of his church. If we have dirty temples, we're not saved. If we have dirty temples, we're not sanctified. If we have dirty temples, we're not part of God because God is holy and he has commanded you and I to be holy. How's he doing with the temple today? Now, individually, certainly we are the temple. <laughs> also, collectively, we are the temple. So whenever people gather together in religious settings, in Sunday morning worship, in times of conferences or revivals or meetings, how is Jesus in their midst? Does he clean the temple? Does he purify it? Or do men and women come in laden with sin and carnality and leave with sin and carnality? Remember the apostle Paul said, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Well, whenever Jesus came to the temple, he changed the status quo. It was all different. He didn't allow it to stay the same. And today, his message to you and I is the very same. Because God changes not. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's the same about his cleansing power. So we ask, who is this? Well, number one, he is a Jesus that will cleanse the temple. He'll cleanse my temple. He'll cleanse your temple. He'll cleanse our temple. He will cleanse what is called the church so he can have the real church. Now, in addition to coming in to the temple, you'll notice that he is a man who came into the temple, but he knocked out the evil spirits. Let me turn again and read in Matthew 21. And this time I'm going to be reading from verse 12. Jesus went into the temple and cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple. He cast out. Did you know that one of Jesus' powers, one of Jesus' duties, and he's very effective at this, is to cast out things that do not belong in the temple. Sometimes those are spirits. Whether we want to recognize this fact or not, the Holy Spirit can possess our temple or an evil spirit can possess our temple. Mark 1 and 39, Jesus preached in their synagogues and throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. 
sometimes there's plenty. Well, all the time, really. All the time there's plenty of devils residing in the synagogue or in the ch what is called the church, the church gatherings. So who is this man? Well, he is a tens temple cleanser, number one. And number two, he is one who casts out evil spirits. In today's church, we need a thorough cleansing. We need to allow this kind of Jesus to come into our midst, cleanse the temple, get rid of the evil spirits, and hallelujah, do away with the money changers. Do you know that some people are just in the business of preaching as a business? Just in the business of the gospel for money. Well, Jesus said he's going to cast out the money changers. People who are buying and selling. Can you imagine a money changer sitting at the table? Making change for people so they can buy the doves. They have a $10 bill, but the dove cost a dollar, so they had to get a $5 bill and five ones. They need change. But then the money changer charges a surcharge, a tax, and he gets a portion of the money for himself. Money changing on God. Buying and selling on God. Did you know what my Bible tells me? Proverbs 22 or 23, I should say, Proverbs 23 and 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Here were people making a business in the things of God based on buying and selling. But whenever it comes to spiritual things, we can't buy and sell. We have to obtain the truth. And once we get it, we cannot turn it loose. It is our salvation. It is our heavenly ticket. So who is this man? Well, number one, he's the sinless man. He's the one that comes to the temple and cleanses it. He's the one who casts out the demons. He's the one that does away with the money changers. And you notice that in this temple setting, they were selling doves. <laughs> Who is the dove? Well, the dove is the Holy Spirit. And John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode on Jesus. The dove is the Holy Spirit. So here comes Jesus. Here comes this man who is no longer a lamb, but a lion. He comes cleansing the temple. He comes casting out the demons. He comes getting rid of the money changers. And he comes dealing with those who are selling the dove. My friends, today, people are selling the dove. The Holy Spirit, they've made a whole business centered around what is called the Holy Spirit. And most of the time, it is the false Holy Spirit. It is a spirit that is camouflaged to look like the Holy Spirit of God, when indeed it's a demonic spirit. The selling of the dove. Well, whenever you combine all of these things, you find that you're right in the middle of a den of thieves. Those who will steal spiritual things under the guise of religion. 
But verily, verily, I say unto you, John 10 and 1, he that entereth not into the door by the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, is the same as a thief and a robber. In today's modern religion, we're trying everything to claim Christianity. But in the middle of that mixture, we have an unclean temple. In the middle of that mixture, we have satanic spirits in the synagogue. In the middle of that mixture, we have money changers who are buying and selling truth and deceiving us concerning what is truth and what is a lie. And we have in the middle of that mixture, those who are selling the Holy Spirit, making him something that he is not. And it's all in the name of Jesus. All in the name of God. You know what it does? It produces this kind of religion. But God is calling us to this kind. There is nothing more that we need than a pure heart. There's nothing more than we need than holiness. There's nothing more that we need than sanctification. There's nothing more than we need that we need than genuine salvation. You know, I really don't care what denominations say. Let me know what the book says. Let me know what this book says. Let Jesus ride in. Let him come back into the temple again. Let him do his work in you and in I. And if so, we will become a blessed people. Well, May God bless you this day. May he take the thoughts that have been given from this 21st chapter of the book of Matthew and encourage you and bless you. And until we meet again next week, may you be honored to serve the real Jesus. Grace and peace be unto you.